It was a fine day, and a fair wind filled the sails of the black pig as she rolled merrily through the waves. Just where she was sailing to, nobody knew. Least of all, Captain Pugwash, who was far too busy taking a little snooze on the quarterdeck, even to care. The wheel turned idly this way and that. And really the only person who knew what was happening was Tom the cabin boy, who was keeping watch in the crow's nest. Suddenly he spotted something. A sail! A sail! He cried. A ship! A fine ship on the starboard bow! Down on the deck, Captain Pugwash sat up and blinked. Then he seized his telescope, got up, and rushed eagerly to the side of the deck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yes, mm. he thought. It's a ship, all right. <laughs> but it looks a funny sort of ship. <laughs> There's, there's no one aboard, no one on the deck, no one in the rigging. <laughs> Strange. Uh, can't see a soul in the cabin. <laughs> oh dear. Mm. Uh, no guns in the ports. <laughs> but, but wait, what's that? <laughs> a, a, a huge pile of treasure by the mast. Oh, oh. Hey, Tom! He cried. It's a treasure ship, and, uh, and, and there's no one aboard. Get out the rowing boat and, uh, and take me over at once. By this time, the other ship was quite close. Tom got the rowing boat ready, and although it was never easy getting the captain out of a big boat into a little one, <coughs> they managed it. And soon Tom was rowing the captain away from the black pig. Now, the other ship wasn't quite so harmless and deserted as it looked. It was cutthroat Jake's ship, and Jake himself was hiding there, rubbing his hands and chortling with wicked glee, as he and his terrible crew watched and waited for Captain Pugwash to fall into the trap. The captain was quite close to Jake's ship now. Soon the bows rose high over them, as Tom brought the little rowing boat in and along to where a rope ladder hung conveniently over the side. Captain Pugwash wasn't usually much good at rope ladders, but he was so excited that he managed this one quite easily. He jumped onto the deck, and there was the treasure, even more splendid than he'd imagined. For one brief moment, Pugwash gazed in happy delight at his prize. And then, grab him, boys, shouted Cutthroat Jake. We've got him this time. And all the pirates rushed out of their hiding places. <laughs> Captain Pugwash ran for it. Oh, oh, oh. But they were too fast for him and very soon he was well and truly caught. Gotcha, said Jake. Now then, boys, what about that plaque? Ah, <laughs> good, good. Ever walk the plank, Captain? No? Well, you're going to know, <laughs> for the last time. <laughs> it's easy. You starts at this end, and you falls off at t'other. <laughs> And these here is bags of gold. Seeing as you're so fond of treasure, Captain, we'll tie them round your wrists and ankles. It'll make you sink faster. So, heavily laden with useless gold, Pugwash sadly mounted the plank and thought that his last hour had really arrived. But he and Jake and all the pirates had forgotten Tom, still waiting in the little boat below. Off you go, Captain, said Jake. We can't wait all day, you know. And Captain Pugwash started to walk, very unsteadily, along the plank. If there was one thing he hated, it was cold water. <laughs> wait for it, yelled Jake. <laughs> 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 when the pirate heard the plank, 
They all roared with laughter and rolled about the deck and, and made such a noise that nobody noticed what was really happening. Tom the cabin boy was fishing the captain out of the water and into the rowing boat. And although it was pretty hard work, when Cutthroat Jake did take a look over the side, this is what he saw. Tom with the captain rowing like anything for the black pig. Curses, roared Cutthroat Jake. Fetch me a cannon. I'll smash him to smithereens, I will. But all the cannons had been hidden to disguise the ship. It was a long time before the pirates found one and set it up and made it ready. Shaking with rage, Jake lit the fuse. Oh. The first shot missed. And the second shot missed. And by this time, Jake was all but choking with fury. So he loaded the cannon with an extra big cannonball to make sure of hitting the boat this time. But it was too big. It got stuck in the cannon. And when they let it off, the whole thing exploded with a fearful roar and knocked out Cutthroat Jake and all his wicked crew senseless. Meanwhile, Tom was rowing hard and very nearly home. And up on the deck of the Black Pig, the mate, roused by the noise from his afternoon nap, sat up, rubbed his eyes and cried, Why, it's the captain. Fetch me a boat hook, somebody. So they got him a boat hook. And the mate reached down and fished around until he managed to hook the captain. So Pugwash came back to his ship again. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. And with him, the bags of gold which Jake had tied on to make him sink quickly. Oh, <laughs> smart work, eh? <laughs> said the captain as he stood in triumph amid his admiring crew. <laughs> It'll take a cleverer villain than old ruffian Jake to catch me. <laughs> Pugwash! <laughs> Nobody noticed Tom as he slipped away to his hammock below. Oh, well, thought Tom as he settled down to sleep. It's a good thing there was somebody there to catch him. Tom, lad, bring me my navigation table. Here you are, Captain. Master mate, me chart, please. One chart as requested, Captain. Pirates Willie Barnabas, me compass and dividers, please. Thank you. <laughs> now, holding the chart down with the compass, thus, and taking the dividers firmly in the right hand, we shut the eyes tightly and find our position, thus. Amazing what one can do with modern scientific instruments. <laughs> was that Captain Pugwash was lost. Not only lost, but becalmed as well. No breath of wind stirred the sails, and even if it had, the captain hadn't the faintest idea which way to sail. In actual fact, Captain, I could tell you exactly where we are. Indeed, Master Mate. How so? We are here, where it says, beware of sea monsters. And what leads you to that conclusion? Because if you look over your shoulder, Captain, you will observe a dirty great sea monster battling barnacles. <laughs> Help! <laughs> yeah. Oh! What's it want, Captain? Food, I should think. Hey, I, I, I reckon that means us. No, no, Willie. That's not a man eating monster. Let's try it with some ship's biscuits. Look, a careful, Tom Lad. Don't, don't go too close. <laughs> there. It seems to like that. And that's given me an idea, Captain. Suppose you take another box of biscuits and a length of rope. Let the others hoist you up the mast, out along the yard arm, and lower you onto the monster's head. Then you can dangle the biscuits in front of its nose like a carrot in front of a donkey. 
The monster will chase the biscuits, and we put a tow rope on its tail. Uh, uh, and uh, away we go, eh? <laughs> Excellent, Tom. Uh, only I think it would be better if uh, uh, you did the... Uh, oh, no, Captain. I've got to keep the monster happy with the concertina. Uh, oh, very well. <laughs> Right, out to the end of the yard, Arm. Oh. Help. 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 Look out, Cap'n. Help. Oh, that's told it. He's been a guy that got it all the wrong way round. Help. Never mind, the result's the same. Now, all we need to do is to get this rope onto the monster's tail, like that. Hooray! Suffering seaweed, said the captain, as he sat some time later in his cabin. I feel like a really sumptuous supper after all that excitement. You look like being a really sumptuous supper for the monster, thought Tom as he gazed out of the window. The black pig was safely at anchor, and the monster was enjoying its supper too. Maybe it's just as well some sea monsters are vegetarian. <laughs>